What's up everyone, Criddle here, and I wanted to go over my kind of tier list for uh, Diablo 4's characters. This isn't really like an in-game tier list, it's more of a fun, viable tier list. So, uh, leveling from 1 all the way up to 100, because I feel like every single class has that in-game super overpowered build that you can get to eventually uh, if you you know choose the right stuff you can go out there and you can look for different you know guides or whatever and you can get to that point but this is my tier list of if you want the easiest time going through the game or if you want to have a really rough time and probably not enjoy it at all this would be the tier list for you so we're going to start out with the very first top class in my opinion and then we're going to go down to the bottom class uh, and we're going to start out with rogues rogues are by far in my opinion the easiest class to play in diablo 4 uh, they just do everything well they have a lot of viable builds so you can kind of build them however you want and it will work they have amazing mobility they have very high damage they can do aoe and they can do single target for bosses and they just work it's just if you play a rogue and then you go play anything else, or if you play anything else and then go play a rogue, you're gonna see such a drastic difference in the gameplay that you're probably going to not wanna play the other classes anymore. You're only gonna to wanna to play rogue going forward. So that's why it's at the top of the list and it's not even a question of the easiest, best class if you just want to jump into the game and be able to do anything that you wanna do. Next up, I personally feel like it's Sorcerer. This is uh, kind of a, tough one for me um I, I was debating putting another one ahead of this which is the next one on the list and we'll go over that in a second but the sorcerer i feel like is very easy to understand it's a sorcerer you just blast things uh you can put down a lot of you know instant like the uh the, the hydra or whatever you can put that down and then just kind of walk away and let the hydra deal with it there's a lot of different ways you can play the game with a sorcerer and that's what i like about it and you just kind of expect this is how the sorcerer is to be played when you start playing it and that is how the sorcerer is played as you're playing through it from level 1 to 50. Uh, it does kind of slow down a little bit in the 25 range but it's still fairly easy to level to 50 and then once you get to 50 going for those in-game builds you can continue to build them fairly easily just by finding the right items and continuing to upgrade your gear um, it has amazing mobility through the teleport because uh, you can basically have an unlimited teleport and go all over the place. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, it's got awesome AOE abilities. It does lack a little bit on the single target for the boss fights. However, you can just use your AOE abilities and hit those bosses as well. Chain Lightning, for example, will bounce between you and the boss, so that'll work. Um, the orb lightning ball whatever it's called ball lightning is i don't know if it's still overpowered in season three i haven't really checked but in season two it was ridiculous because the uh the way that the math was calculated on it and you could have a ton of those ball lightnings which would do a lot for aoe damage but you could just have every single one of those ball lightnings hit a single target boss and absolutely destroy it so that's why i put in the sorcerer at number two Coming down to number three, which I almost put in as number two, was the Druid. So in, I feel like the Druid is a fantastic character, especially once you get into late game. They have a lot of versatile builds, a lot of variety in their builds. You can you know, be a werewolf or a werebear. You can be a ranged or a melee character. They have their... Uh, their storm builds where they can just have all sorts of stuff going on the you know basically click a button and watch what happens builds uh, they've, they've got a lot of viable builds the problem that i come down to with the druid is uh, there's two actually one is it needs a lot of specific items to make a lot of those in-game builds work and then level 25 to 50 becomes a slog there's just something about those levels that just the game just kind of slows down and it just becomes really tedious to level up a druid. They're just, they're not strong enough yet, but you know, like a lot of their abilities are just kind of slow. And um, I think I, when I played my druid recently, I was leveling with the, uh, the werebear and, you know, doing the trample or whatever it was, trample landslide build probably is what I ended up doing. I don't even remember because the slog was just so awful. I was just trying out anything I could to get through those 25 levels. Once I got to level 50 though, it became a lot of fun. I actually made a, um, the claw, whatever the lightning storm claw druid. And I had a lot of fun with it. It was absolutely a beast, did tons of damage, especially single target damage, but it also did AOE damage because it hit, you know, everything around it. Uh, and it was essentially unkillable. It healed itself up anytime that it took damage and it 
barely took any damage because it had very, very high defense. So the Druid was a very good in-game. Like I said, all of them have very good in-game. But getting to that point of level 50 plus was kind of a slog. And that's why I put it at number three as opposed to the Sorcerer. A little bit easier. Next up on my list is the Necromancer. So Necromancer um, has a lot of fundamental flaws in my opinion, specifically the minion builds. Minions are very hard in this type of game to balance because you either overtune them and then all the minions are super godly powerful and they destroy everything on the screen or you undertune them and they die to every little thing and you have to micromanage them all day. So I feel like the minion builds in general uh, are just not, great to play in any Diablo game, and that includes Diablo 4. Uh, so that one I would just kind of just throw minions out the window. That makes the only one real viable build for the Necromancer is the Bone Spear build, and that's pretty much what everybody goes to. It is really, really strong, especially late game, but trying to play the Bone Spear build up to you know level 50 and then trying to play it after that once you can get to some of that in-game gear is just a it's a slog and it's boring and it's just not fun because you have to like build up some things and then do your ability and you have to position yourself just right on the screen so that you can hit the enemy and then have the uh the bone spear come back at you the right way there are a couple of aoe builds that they can do um, but I just found them to not be really that great when you're leveling. Uh, they work fine once you get into tier four and you can get all that the right gear, but trying to get up to that point uh, was very boring and tedious, and I personally just didn't like it. So that's why I put that in at number four, which leaves us with the Barbarian and the final spot, and this class is just awful. Like, I, I don't know what to say about it. It's just absolutely awful. It's an awful leveling experience. Um, the thing that I really didn't like about it is the build up and weight. It was very similar to the Necromancer, but just worse. So uh, Upheaval is a very popular build, uh, leveling build for the Barbarian. The, the Whirlwind build, which is a very popular build in previous Diablo games, just doesn't hold up in my opinion compared to some of the other ones and with the upheaval build you have to hit something a couple of times and then do upheaval you don't really do any damage until you do upheaval uh, so you have to you know every single group of monster you got to go up to it hit it a few times line yourself up and do upheaval very much like the bone spear build of the necromancer you got to you know kind of build up to it and then do something to really take out all the enemies so when you're when you're trying to go through these dungeons it it just feels very sluggish slow and unfun to me um so that's pretty much it I, I do want to say that each of these characters, though, has a like an in-game build, like I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I would completely change this list when you talk about in-game, and I would probably put you know Rogue still near the top. Barbarian and Necromancer are definitely two of the top uh, on the in-game builds. They can essentially one-shot any boss in the game, including Uber Lilith. Um, and they're just the easiest to play if you want to just go into a boss, hit one button, and win. They're the, the definitely the best to play at level 100 once you get all the stuff uh, to to make those builds. It's just getting there is kind of a pain. Rogue, of course, still okay. It's it's fine all the way through from level 1 to 100 and can do everything. Um, and the Sorcerer, I would say, is down near the bottom when it comes to actual in-game stuff. It's near the bottom. It's just, you know, kind of slows down. However, it does have its abilities to be able to one-shot bosses. I know that in last season, last season two, uh, a lot of people were doing the lightning ball and just basically destroying Uber Lilith in a matter of seconds. So anyway, that is my list of uh, or my tier list for each of the classes in Diablo 4. Hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, hopefully it helped out. If it did, please like, subscribe, follow, all that fun stuff. I do stream daily over on Twitch except for Fridays and uh, we play a variety of games and check them all out and I give my opinions on them. Take care, have a good one and see you next time. Bye.